hello hello everyone welcome back to the channel miss crochet and coffee here and today we are doing a whip and chat so get out whatever it is you're working on and work along with me i am still working on lamore she is a 50 by 70 round with special version 3 enhancements and as you can see we're out of the water folks yes so this weekend i was able to get out of the water finally and by out of the water, I mean I'm up here by her head. So all the rest of it is done. I will try to remember to put a picture in at the end of the video so you guys can see where we're at on this. I should have this done by... By the time you guys see me on Friday, I should have this done. Um, so yeah. Uh, let's see here. So we are going to essentially try to work our way from the bottom to the top. So, yeah, we won't obviously get that whole thing done. We might by the time I'm done with this. I'm going to try like I did last week where I record a little bit on Monday and then a little bit on Tuesday. And then you guys will see this Tuesday afternoon. So, yeah, so today is Monday, February 10th, which, you know, if you're watching this in the future, it doesn't really matter what the date is. But, um, yeah, we are getting ready to celebrate my little guy's birthday. Orion turned nine on the 11th. Of February so yay he's excited I'm excited sort of I'm not excited about him getting older just because you know he was my baby and Orion when he was born he was actually born uh one month premature uh at eight and a half pounds he was what they called the shark baby and they called him the shark baby because he was uh because he was premature he had to stay in the needle neck the needle neck natal uh, ICU because he was having issues with his breathing. He swallowed fluid when he was born and they had to life flight him to another hospital that was about two hours away from where we lived. So he was the shark baby at the NICU because uh, he was bigger than all the other preemies. Uh, if Orion would have went full term, he would have been 12 pounds. Uh, I have big babies. <laughs> uh, so Orion turns uh, nine, and I'm not sure how to feel about it. He's such he's such a little dude. Uh, he actually, I gave him one of his birthday presents early, which was one of the Zox bracelets. Uh, he seems to really like it. And we actually got both the kids Zox bracelets. If you don't know what I'm talking about lately, recently, you guys have probably seen me wearing these. They're called Zox bracelets. And they, essentially the proceeds when you buy one go to helping countries that don't have fresh water get fresh water. They're only like $10. So I have probably like 10 or 20 of them now. Um, but we decided to buy the kids some because they do have kid ones. So Orion got one as an early birthday gift. And so that Maggie didn't feel left out, we, of course, got Maggie one, too. So Orion has one that says, believe in yourself. Because Orion, even for his age, he has a lot of self-doubt when he does, you know, something new. Like most people. So, you know, we wanted to give him that little reminder. And then, of course, Maggie has one that says besties. And it has little unicorns on it. Because she always tells me that I'm her best friend until, you know, mommy says or does something mean. Um... So we got her one that says besties to kind of remind her that, you know, her family is her best friends. So this weekend was, this was a weird weekend for me. Like I got a little sick yesterday, which was Sunday. I wasn't feeling the best yesterday. I don't, I was just feeling really run down. I don't know why. I think I, I thought I was starting to get Mr. Coffee's cold. Because my nose wouldn't stop running and I kept coughing and sneezing. And I'm like, what the hell? Uh, apparently, it, whatever it was went away because I feel fine now. Uh, oh, yay. The sun's coming out. It snowed last night. So it's been kind of overcast here today. And of course, it would snow because, you know, then there was something wrong with my car this morning. But yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. So this weekend was odd, mostly because we actually did dinner and a movie. So we got the kids and brought them into the living room with us and we watched Maleficent, The Mistress of Evil. Love Maleficent 1. Angelina Jolene, Jolie, oh my God, I love her. Um, 
and we watched it with the kids because we've the kids and I have watched the first one together. Mr. Coffee watched it while he was living up here. So we all seen the first one. So when they the second one came out, I was like, I have to watch it. I have to. And Mr. Coffee found it on Google something, Google movies. I guess he could he was renting it. So he rented that movie for us to watch uh Saturday night. And then last night, which was Sunday, we watched Zombieland 2, which the kids didn't watch that with us. That's a little too much for their little psyches to handle. Like, I don't need to be woken up at 3 in the morning to some child yelling at me that zombies are coming after them. So, yeah. Um, so we did dinner and a movie with the kids. And then me and Mr. Coffee did dinner and a movie with each other. And the kids kind of just ran around, you know, driving us insane. So we actually let the kids pick dinner this weekend because usually I just throw whatever I'm going to make out and let that be that. But we decided, okay, let's let the kids pick because Maggie's been super picky. Maggie's at that point now where she's like, I want this for dinner. Like, okay, perfect example. She went, I want oatmeal for dinner. Now, Maggie's like a straight cat. You give her something she wants once and she'll never leave you alone about it. So we've had oatmeal for dinner Three times in the last two weeks, okay? Get her oatmeal for dinner. She takes two or three bites out of it. I don't want this. I'm sorry, say what? I don't want this. The night before that, she wanted chicken. She wanted chicken and mac and cheese. So I made her baked chicken and mac and cheese. I don't do a lot of fried cooking just because it's really unhealthy. I know it's 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 a horrible thing to say, especially since I'm Southern, but I don't I don't do a lot of fried cooking. I do every once in a while, just I try to minimize the amount of frying I do. So there's a lot of baked everything. And so I'm sitting here and I go, okay, you want mac, you want chicken. Baked some chicken, made some mac and cheese, did some potatoes with it with homemade gravy. And she looked at it when I was done. She goes, what are we eating, mommy? I'm like, we're having chicken and mac and cheese. And she goes, I don't want that. Y'all, if this little girl comes to me one more time and tells me that she wants something and then doesn't eat it, I'm going to put her up for sale on the yard sale site. Um, I love my children. I really do. But Maggie is working our last nerves lately. I don't know what her deal is. Um, we've been trying to spend a little bit of extra time with her. Uh, we've been trying to see if we can get one of her friends to come over. They went outside for a little while to run off some energy even though it was cold and they really didn't want to. Essentially, you know, you that time you have to force your child to go outside and you're like, go outside and enjoy the sunshine. Like, that's that's what it was like. And they fussed about it, but they went out and they had fun. They got to play on the very cold slide and swings and everything else. And they, they had fun. Sorry, I had to pause. I had to sneeze. But, uh... Yeah, so we've been trying to figure out what in the world is going on with Maggie because she has just been hellacious lately. Now, I don't like calling my children brats because they're not brats. They actually are very well-behaved kids. Just every once in a while, they get this this itch up their butt where they're just like, let's destroy everything. And I'm like, look here. If you touch one more thing in this house, I will bite both your fingers off. Um, yeah, they have more than two fingers, but to them, that that's, that's scary. So... We don't know what's been going on with Maggie, but Maggie has been testing her limits lately. I don't know if it's a mental growth spurt that she's going through. Uh, we've been having her practice her reading a lot more just because her teacher says she's actually doing really good and seems interested in it now. Whereas before, she uh, she wasn't very interested in it. She didn't want to read. She wanted somebody to read to her. And we read to her. The problem is when you read to her and she doesn't pay attention and then she'll want you to read something else. And she's like flipping on the couch. She's doing cartwheels in the house. She's trying to ride the dogs, which can, can I just say, I can't wait till she gets big enough that she can't ride the dogs anymore. I'm tired of like looking up and seeing my daughter ride my German shepherd. She, Daisy is not a horse. Okay. Like, I don't know how many times I, the things you say that you never thought you would say in your house, stop putting that in your mouth. That dog is not a horse. Why are these things that I have to necessarily say in my house? I know I have smaller children because I'm not going to call them small kids because they're not small. Nine and eight or nine and seven is not small to me. They're, they're children. They, they shouldn't be riding dogs. Now, Ryan, he ain't riding no dog. 
But that Maggie, y'all, that Maggie, I don't know what her deal is. And so this weekend, I essentially, we were sitting here and we're spending time together, you know, the good old family time. And Saturdays of kind of like a modge podge and we had a bunch of errands to run. So we had to go get groceries and I had to go get more yarn for a couple of projects I'm working on. And I had a tester pattern this weekend. And for the first time in a long time, I actually 100% completed the test part of the pattern, not just half of it, and then told her what the other edits were. Um, so I was, I was all excited about that. And Maggie has just been like everywhere and nowhere. She just is jumping off stuff. I looked up at one point and she was sitting on the counter. And the next thing I know, she's doing a backflip off the couch. And I'm like, what is up with you? I think it was because I gave her, uh, Laura Law's Craft Corner made me black and white cookies because I kept bugging her to make them. So thank you, Laura, that they were delicious. The part that didn't kill me. Um, I ended up only eating one because they were made with dark chocolate and I can absolutely not have dark chocolate. It's, I can have milk chocolate, but I cannot have dark chocolate. And I found out that I apparently... I'm not sure what the white side of the cookie is, but I tasted the white part and then I I was fine with the white part and then I went to go eat the dark part and immediately like my throat and everything started acting funny so I stopped eating it and I let the kids have them and she's been like, like I don't know if it's a sugar high because sugar high shouldn't last this long. It's like kitty crack. Like now the black and white cookies will forever be known as kitty crack because I swear even Orion, who usually is hibernating in his room, he got a new uh, Beverly Clearly book, so he was all excited. Uh, he he usually hibernates in his room. No, he is everywhere and nowhere as well. He's jumping off stuff. He's running around through the house with her, which is why we made them go outside, because we're like, if you got all this energy, take your little hypotel outside and run off the energy. Well, well. Um, he ran it off all right. So... Let's change color. So we went from the right arrow. And now we're going to go to L. So we get back in the house with the kids. And we're, me and Mr. Coffee, we're, we're tired. You know, we're old folk. We're not really old, but old enough that we shouldn't be running around in the cold with the kids. Chasing them, playing tag. Slipping and falling all in the snow and everything else. But it, it was really nice out uh it wasn't nice out according to mr coffee it was nice out i was freezing my tail off but i had to suck it up because i wanted to be able to be out there with the kids so i'm sitting there and we're at the playground and maggie is running around orion's running around and i'm like okay they got to run off this kitty crack soon y'all well, we were outside for two hours and i i could by the time we came inside i couldn't feel my toes it's like children and i remember this when i was little Children don't have temperatures. Like, they don't get hot or cold. Their faces can be beet red from the cold. They can be having, like, the runny nose going, like Niagara Falls. And they just don't care. They're in play mode, and they don't care what's going on. But the minute you take them out of play mode, it's cold. Can we go home? Why is it so cold? So we brought them home because we were right up the street here. They have a jumbo playground up the street here and we brought them home and like the, as soon as they took off their snow gear and everything else they just were running meanwhile me and mr coffee are sitting on the couch exhausted like what the hell how do they still have all this energy and i'm like dude i'm telling you it's the kitty crack it's it's the kitty crack and he's like well what the hell is the kitty crack and i was like it's the black and white cookies that laura sent and so he he goes over and he's like i'm gonna try one of these cookies i'm like dude don't do it i'm telling you right now don't eat the kitty crack Yo, Mr. Coffee ate one of those cookies. He stayed up till four in the morning. I was just like, uh, now y'all remember my story from last week. If you don't, um, Mr. Coffee's been going to bed every night at like 1030, like clockwork. Like the moment 1005 hits, he, he starts yawning. And then once 1030 comes, he's zonked out. No, he stayed up until freaking 4 a.m. I went to bed at two. He comes rolling in there and he's like, I'm not even tired. Who are you talking to? Like, I'm asleep. Like, who are you talking to? He's like, I'm talking to you. Why would you get in bed and start talking to me? He goes, I don't know. I just feel like I have so much energy and I'm not tired. And I'm like, go for a run. I made him go walk the dogs because I was like, if you if you got that much energy, go walk the dogs. I'm sure they don't have a problem going out this late at night. Wrong. 
Killian looked at him, laid back down. Daisy was all ready to go. Killian was like, uh, this is not, this is not time to be outside, daddy. Like, you, you're doing the most right now. He grabs their leashes and he's like, come on, Killian. Killian looks at him, literally looks at him and goes, no. Goes and lays back down. I was like, I don't think Killian wants to go outside. But he, so he takes Daisy, which then, of course, as soon as he leaves, Killian starts crying. So then he comes back because I messaged him to come back to get his dog because he's waking up the kids at 4.30 in the morning. And Mr. Coffee went and walked the dogs for about, I don't know, 20 minutes, came back and he's like, I'm gonna, I gotta try to get some sleep. He goes, it's almost 5 a.m. I, I, I should probably get some sleep. I'm like, yeah, you should. He wakes up the next morning, gets up, gets the kids up, gets them fed, gets them their meds, goes and walks the dogs, comes back, and he's like, those cookies were really good. Like, I'm going to eat another one. I'm like, please, God, no, it's the kitty crack. Don't touch the kitty crack. So from now on, black and white cookies in my house are considered kitty crack because they take and turn my children to insane little monsters that don't sit down. And apparently they work on Mr. Coffee, too, which, you know, your husband's always your your, you know, other kids. So there's that. Um, so yeah, so we spent a lot of the, the weekend just, you know, playing with the kids and stuff. So I don't know what's going on with Maggie. That's where that story was going. I don't know what's going on with Maggie, but she's been just testing our patients lately. And it came to a head, uh, Sunday. We were sitting here and Sunday mornings, they get showers to get ready for the week. And so I'm sitting here and I'm like, all right, let's get ready to get in the shower, clean up your rooms, get all your laundry together. Because I do laundry one one day a week. There's only four of us in this house. I can do laundry in one day. And by laundry, I mean wash, dry, fold, put away. My day is not complete until all the laundry in the house is washed, dried, folded, and put away. And then once a month, I will wash the bed sheets and then swap them for the bed sheets the spare because each bed has two sets of bed sheets so we'll swap them back and forth and the kids just got new bed sheets i need new bed sheets but apparently trying to find california king bed sheets is hella expensive like the one set we were looking at was 135 dollars. i'm like for blankets no nah, i'm good i'm i'm good i'm cheap i'm cheap i'm cheap when it comes to that kind of stuff so I'm sitting there and I'm like, I really need to organize my canvases. I need to do like a de-stashing, if you will. I just did a de-stashing, I feel like, but I'm already like getting to the point where I'm like, okay, I need to find some more storage boxes or something. So I'm sitting here and I'm like, I don't have energy to do anything. So I, I think I colored for a little bit that day. And then I just sat here on the couch. Well, then Sunday morning, we were getting the kids, you know, ready for, uh, we're getting them ready for the day, getting them, you know, started for the week. You know, they have reading times that they have where they read to each other or they read to us and then they have to get showers. And I go to help Maggie clean up her room because her, of course, her room is destroyed. Now I must have the only little boy on the planet that has a clean room because my, Orion's room stays clean. It helps the fact that he never does anything in his room besides read or play video games. But his room stays clean. Maggie is, I always tell people, Maggie's my boy, Orion's my girl. And I tell them that just because Orion does the things that you would think little girls would do. Like, with me, like cleaning his, like keeping his room clean and making his bed and every, he doesn't like to get dirty and stuff like that. Whereas Maggie's all about jumping in mud and getting dirty and her room's never clean and she likes sports. Orion's interested in sports, but I don't think he really knows what to make of it because, you know, we have, we don't watch sports in my house. So he wants, he's interested to like, he, like he wants to play, but he hasn't been able to play because of his asthma. So this year we're going to try to get him signed off to play and maybe put him in like little league baseball or something. We'll figure it out either way. So we're getting the kids ready and I go help Maggie clean her room. Now, one of the big things that has been an issue lately with Maggie is writing on stuff. Writing on stuff that isn't paper. Now, you guys know I'm an affiliate for Arteza, I, uh, which, by the way, all my links and stuff are down below. Small little plug there. So if you're interested in getting anything from Arteza, the, the links are down below. Uh, you can't combine discounts, so if they have a sale going on, unfortunately, you can't combine your discounts, but their prices are usually pretty decent. So I'm sitting here, 
And I'm like, okay. Let's get her room clean because I have to clean her room because I have to make sure because Maggie has a bad habit of throwing her dirty laundry in her closet. So I have to clean her room just to make sure that there's no dirty laundry because what ends up happening is she'll clean her room after I've done laundry and then the laundry basket's already half full again and I get irritated because I'm like, I thought I asked you to bring all your stuff out and she'd be like, I did. I just found this stuff. And it'll be stuff that she hasn't worn that just happened to be like on the floor and she'll just throw it into the laundry. And I'm like, look here, you tiny human, if you do not stop. So we made the rule that you have to clean your room before I do laundry. So I'm helping her clean her room and I notice, and Maggie's been doing this for years. It's not like, you know, she just up and started doing this. She's been doing this for years and getting in trouble each time. She likes to write on her baby dolls. Now, we try to keep markers and stuff away from Maggie. Maggie will sneak markers. She will sneak peanut butter crackers, apparently. But she'll sneak markers. Like, she'll be sitting out here with us with the markers. She'll, like, put one in her pocket or something. She'll get up, leave the main, leave all the markers here, and then go in her room and start writing on stuff. Now, Maggie has five sketch pads of all variety, different shapes, sizes, brands. She just has a bunch of different sketch pads which are just like the like because I'm an affiliate with Arteza she has a bunch of sketch pads because when I show like when they send me stuff to show a lot of the times I'll go back and buy more for the kids because the kids both love to draw except for Orion will actually draw in a book Maggie feels the need to draw on the walls she feels the need to draw on her baby dolls she feels the need to draw on her stuffed animals she feels the need to draw on herself and I'm like, I don't want to stunt her creativity, but I also don't want to pay a hell of a lot of money because she's writing on the frickin' walls and that's not where you draw. We even went as far as getting a big piece of paper and taping it to the wall. The paper has to be at least seven foot tall, okay? We taped it to the wall so that she could, uh, so that she could draw on the paper on the wall. Nope, she drew right next to the paper on the wall. Guys, can I tell you how frustrated I was when I went in her room and saw a little heart on her wall that said Maggie? And I was like, well, you did a good job drawing the heart. Like, you got to still be, like, you know, you, you got to be supportive but, like, firm about the fact that she's not supposed to draw on the wall. And I'm like, well, you did a good job on the heart. Can we put the heart on the paper next time? Now, I can get permanent marker and stuff off the wall. It takes a little bit, but I can get it off. But... So one of the last gifts my parents got my children, well, the girls, were these things called American Girl Dolls. Now, if you don't know what American Girl Dolls are, they are hella expensive. They run between 100 to 175 bucks, And you can buy clothes and outfits for the dolls. You can buy clothes and outfits for your child to match the dolls. And so my parents, because this year Matt Minna had requested an American Girl doll. It's one of the few things that she asked for that year. Minna doesn't usually ask for stuff. She just randomly gets stuff. So it was one of the few things that she actually opened up and was like, I would really like an American Girl doll. And of course, everybody in the family is like, what the hell is an American Girl doll? We saw the price and everybody had like tiny little heart attacks. Um, but my parents were like, you know what? I don't care. We're going to get her the American Girl doll. So we were like, all right, cool. Sorry, I'm straightening up drills down here at the bottom. I noticed there was a big gap because I... Wasn't putting my drills on straight. Which, has anybody else noticed that when you put uh, drills on with your multi-placer, sometimes it'll act, add an extra drill? So, here's another little pro tip for you. Um, when you're diamond painting and you use a multi-placer, say your canvas has popping drills. Check to see, like, remove one of the drills and then move your drills around to see if they fill up the spot. Because I, I found out that I had been putting extra drills on the canvas because of the multi-placer. And I wasn't putting them on straight. And I was ending up adding a bunch of extra drills. And it was making the, the canvas pop. I did it to my Royal Diamond painting. And I had to go back through and uh, move, move and shift drills around a lot. It still had popping drills because the drill quality was really bad. But... For the most part, it wasn't popping as bad by the time I, as I finished it. Like right now, there are 40 diamonds that have popped off the canvas just from it sitting because I haven't framed it yet. But yeah, so 
Maggie in this problem with the drawing on thing has been happening for years. Of course, when she was littler, she would do it and she would get in trouble for it. But now she's seven and she's still doing it. And I'm like, look, I love the fact that you're creative like daddy because her big thing is she likes, she likes, to, she wants to be just like daddy. She wants to draw like daddy. Okay, honey, I get it. But do you see daddy drawing on the walls? She's like, no. I'm like, then, then why are you drawing on the walls? And she goes, well, you tell us to be different, mom. I don't want to be just like daddy. I don't want to be a copycat. <sighs> Please, in that aspect, be a copycat. Be a copycat in the fact that you don't draw on the wall. So now we have to make up rules. Where are places that you don't draw? Your face, your eyelids. Because she'll try to give herself makeup with permanent marker. You know how many times my child has gone to school with a permanent maker marker, a permanent marker makeup um, overhaul? Where she has like eyeliner. Well, not eyeliner, so to say. She'll have a smoky eye. And then she'll have like lipstick. And I'm like, I, I'm like, I, I don't know what's wrong with you. Why, why do you do these things, Maggie? And she's like, I just wanted to look pretty. Honey, you don't have to wear makeup to look pretty. She goes, well, not everybody has your looks, mommy. Like she was so mad. And I'm like, Maggie, you look better than I do, honey. You don't need makeup. Like let's, let's not put on makeup. It just messes up your face anyways. And she's like, well, I would play in your makeup like a normal kid, but you don't have makeup. It's kind of the reason I don't have makeup, Maggie. Um, now, she's right. I don't wear makeup. I don't like, it, it messes up your skin. Like, it literally makes your skin age that much faster. They tell you, oh, it's great and moisturizes your skin and all that. No, it does not. It tears up your skin something fierce. It's something we learned in modeling school. Um, but I'm sitting there and... I go in her room to help her clean up Sunday and I notice that one of her, she has a gigantic, because Maggie thinks that she is Minnie Mouse. She has a gigantic Minnie Mouse doll. And the Minnie Mouse had its face colored on all blue. Now I had just seen this Minnie Mouse uh, late Saturday night and it wasn't colored on, which told me she had did it that morning. And in the mornings when me and Mr. Coffee are getting up and getting showers and, you know, talking about what we're going to do for the day. The kids are usually, you know, in their rooms cleaning or, you know, watching TV or something, waiting for us to get them breakfast. Because we usually, we try to wake up before them, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. They wake up before us and they won't come get us. They will sit in their rooms until they get hungry and then they'll come get us. So I'm guessing it happened then. And I'm just sitting there like, uh, okay. So... I, I was like, Maggie, why did you write on Minnie Mouse? And she goes, I don't know. Well, I look in the door jam of her closet and she has drawn there for the fourth time. Mommy is about to lose her shit because I am sick of scrubbing these walls, literally scrubbing paint off the walls to get her to stop. We've given her sketch pads. We've taken her markers. We've, you know, given her coloring books. She has 50, she has more coloring books than I do. Okay. We've given her coloring books. She will not stop writing on the freaking wall. I'm like, just because it's white. Oh my God, it's snowing again. I'm like, just because the wall is white. And in her room, the wall isn't even white anymore. It's tinged blue. It's tinged purple. It's tinged orange. It's tinged red. And I'm like, we rent this, okay? All this damage that you're doing, I have to pay for. Y'all, they're gonna have to repaint this apartment. I'm telling you what, that Maggie... So anyways, um, so she got in trouble and I looked at Mr. Coffee and I'm like, I've had a flip enough. This ends now. And he's like, what, what do you mean? He's looking at me all funny and I'm like, we are not doing this anymore. And he's like, uh, doing what? I was like, get your paracord. Cause he has a spool of paracord that he got from his, uh, he has a spool of paracord that he got from his his stepdad and it's bright pink which is perfect for my little project because Maggie likes pink so I'm sitting there and I'm like this ends now this is going to end right freaking now so I was like all right so I fussed at Maggie for coloring on the wall yet again for the hundredth time and her baby doll and she the American girl doll that my parents got for her she colored on its face I've tried everything to get it off I was told to try WD-40, which I didn't try, but I'm not sure now because it's been sitting on her face for so long. I don't know if it'll come off. 
I've tried toothpaste, I've tried baking soda, I've tried hair dryers, I've tried hair spray, I've tried uh, nail polish remover. I, I've tried everything that I could possibly think of to get it off the baby doll's face. If you yourself have a great uh, home remedy for getting permanent marker off of a baby doll's face, put that down in the comments. Like I said, I've tried toothpaste, I've tried baking soda, I've tried uh, hairspray, I've tried magic eraser i i've tried i gotta try wd-40 because i don't really keep that readily available in the house like i'm not sure why i would but i don't have that readily available in the house um also this canvas is being disrespectful right now right now we have y v six nine and s all in the all in the same vicinity it's really disrespectful to be honest so anyways i'm sitting there and i'm like look this, we, we got to do something. So I, I fuss at Maggie, make her clean her room. And I'm irritated at this point. Like, I'm, I'm ready to lose my ever-loving shit. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, you know what? That's fine. That is, that is fine. Clean your room so you can get in the bloody shower. And I got a little surprise for you. And she goes, surprise? I'm like, yeah, surprise. You're going to love it. Y'all, why did I take everything that brings her happiness out of that room? Then te technically, I didn't take it out of her room. What I did was I put all her toys in the closet. Now, Mag Maggie has a play kitchen. She has a, uh, like a kind of like a little baby uh, cradle. She had her dollhouse. She has Barbies, baby dolls. Maggie has a slew of toys in her room. Okay, Maggie's room, and we consider that to be Toys R Us. So if the kids want to play toys, we tell them to go to Toys R Us. Uh... But Toys R Us right now is currently shut down. We have shut down Toys R Us. So when I finally did get her in the shower after 30 minutes of cleaning her room, because you know she got she she moves at a snail's pace, pace not paste. Um, after 30 minutes of her cleaning, we went ahead and uh, got her in the shower. While she was in the shower for the first time. Ever, I left her alone in the bathroom. I Daisy was next to the door, so if anything happened, Daisy would have been able to alert us that something was up. Daisy was next to the door. I had Daisy posted there, and then Killian was like, you know, wherever. Uh, and I was like, all right, come here. And Mr. Coffee looks at me. He goes, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm taking all the stuff out of her room. I took all her baby dolls, all her Barbies, her dollhouse, the play kitchen, the baby cradle, all the baby dolls, threw everything into her closet. Now, her closet doesn't have a lock. So I was like, how can I lock this to the point where she cannot get into it? Because she, my kids don't go, they don't get on punishment often. So I was like, how can I do this where she can't get into this? Got it. So I was like, grab your paracord. And he's like, the paracord? I'm like, grab the paracord. So because it didn't have a lock on it, and because I crochet... I'm like, we are going to slip stitch her door closed. And he goes, what the hell does that mean? I'm like, we are going to slip stitch it closed. So what I did was I took everything of her toy wise and I put it in the closet, her play kitchen, the cradle, the dollhouse is too big for the closet. So I then put everything from her bed, all her stuffed animals and everything into the closet. She has two stuffed animals she's allowed to play with. Um, one is Paw Paw Bear because she cannot and will not sleep without that bear. And I will not take that little piece of happiness away from her because I, I don't want to deny her listening to Paw Paw. So she has Paw Paw Bear and she has another little unicorn that she got from, uh, my good friend Catherine over at Spasmodic Arts and Crafts. I think it's her name now. It's probably not, but she used to be Spasmodic Arts. Uh, if she's watching this, uh, Catherine, I miss you. Please start making videos again. Yeah, that, that's all. Um, so yeah, so Mr. Coffee's like, well, how are we supposed to lock her out of playing with her toys? Her door doesn't have a lock. And all I can think of is all the numerous stitches and everything I've learned since I started crocheting. And I was like, this is what we're going to do. So what I did was I took and put everything in a closet. I pushed her dollhouse up to her closet took the paracord and slip stitched it around the door handle because it's a door handle that has like the long piece. It's not like the circle door handle. It's the long L shaped door handle. So I took and I t had him put a slip knot into the paracord 
and then I tied it to the door handle. And I was like, pull it tight. I then wrapped the paracord around the post of the dollhouse so that if you try to move the dollhouse, it will tighten the grip on the door handle. Now, Maggie isn't strong enough to, to, to pull it away to the point where she can still get into it. So essentially I pulled it. I have it now where the only way to get into it is if we cut it free. Because we wrapped it around the post of the dollhouse and then slip stitched it again tight and cut the excess off. So that literally if she tries to move the dollhouse, it will just securely keep the door closed. And just in case, because my children, these, these are Mr. Coffee's kids, okay? Again, Mr. Coffee is a genius. And if he wants something, he'll go get it. The kids are the same way. If they want something bad enough, they'll they'll find a way to get it. Which is how she keeps sneaking the freaking peanut butter crackers. Anyways. So I was like, okay, this is going to work. But just in case it doesn't. I then took her bed and me and Mr. Coffee pushed it up against the dollhouse. She can't move her bed. I thought it was genius. Just like uh, we every once in a while, like when we lived at our old place, we would have, the kids would have friends over and one of the kids' friends would always come over just to play on the kids' tablets. And so to keep him from doing it, we would stop charging the tablets. And then when the little boy would come over, he would go straight for the tablet. And my kids didn't like it because they thought that he was coming over to play with them. And here he was just coming over to play with their toys or their tablets. So I then put a little deadbolt on the charge plug to the tablet so he couldn't plug it in. And then little boy stopped coming over magically. It was great. Anyways, so I'm sitting there and we get Maggie out of the shower. And we didn't tell her we were doing this. So she had no clue. She walks into her room and she goes, oh, where are my toys? And I sat her down and I went, listen, listen, mommy loves you, but mommy's getting mad at you. And she's like, why are you mad? Is it because of my toys? And I'm like, no, no, I'm mad because you keep writing on stuff. So all your markers are gone. I threw out all her markers. I, I do this every time. She'll, she'll sneak them home from school one by one. And I, I told, I left them a note for her teacher to let her know that Maggie's been bringing, and they're not, she's not stealing the school supplies. Every year you have to buy your child their own school supplies. She essentially is stealing her own markers from school. So I had to send her in this morning, which is Monday, with her another box of markers and let her teacher know that she's bringing them home one by one. And then using them to color with, because she knows she's not allowed to have any of the markers in the house, which sucks for her because I have like 12 sets of markers in this house. Which I should have them, actually, I should have a marker review coming up for Art and Fly. They contacted me and said that they were going to be sending me out some of their brush tip markers. For, so for look out for that video, hopefully later this week. Um, so yeah, so I'm sitting there and I'm explaining to her why we took her toys and told her that she's on punishment. She had to spend the day in her room because she wrote on her dolls. Did, and I, you know, you got to ask her, you know, do you, because you can't just spank your kids and call it a day like, you know, what happened to me. Because if, if, if this was me back in the 90s when I was raised, um, my dad would have cut my butt. My mom would have cut my butt. My grandma would have cut my butt. And then they would have been like, now don't do it again. And I wouldn't have done it again. But nowadays, you look at your child hard, CYS is ready to come take your kids. So you can't, you can't hit them. So you got to sit them down and explain to them, which doesn't work. But, you know, child psychologists say if you if you hit your child, they'll have mental st instability issues. Hey, I was hit. I, I turned out just fine. <laughs> that ain't funny, y'all. Y'all y'all wrong for that. So I'm sitting there and I'm explaining to her why we took her toys. We let her know that she is on punishment for the next two weeks because she won't stop writing on stuff. I told her that if she would like for me to color with her, I will stop what I'm doing to color with her. And I've been making it a point. She's asked me twice since she got put on punishment to color with her. I make it a point to stop and color with her. And then I'm like, you know, but you're not going to sit here and color on my walls. This is not going to become a thing. And she says that she understands. She doesn't understand. She doesn't care either because this we've we've done this scenario four times and it doesn't work. Talking to her doesn't work. Maggie wants to draw. 
on everything except for paper. She has paper. She has huge sheets. She has little sheets. She has big sheets. She has small sheets. She doesn't care. Maggie just wants to draw on everything. So I'm hoping she learns her lesson this time because this is the first time I've actually take, taken her toys away. So maybe this time she'll get the hint that, you know, you're not to color on the walls. Um, and Mr. Coffee thinks that she's doing it for attention. I'm like, if I gave her any more attention, I literally would get nothing done. I don't get a whole lot done now because from the moment she gets home from school until the moment she goes to bed, mommy, 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 now take it. I play with the kids for about an hour or so after school. I'll play video games with Orion. We'll play video games. We'll all play Minecraft together. I suck at it so bad. I couldn't even kill a sheep in Minecraft. Like, it, it, Enderman got me because I saw it. And apparently in this game, you're not supposed to look at the Enderman because when you do, they viciously attack you. I kept looking at it because I was trying to figure out what it was because I wasn't sure if it was a shadow or what because the Endermans are black with purple eyes. And so I thought I didn't know what the Enderman was and it came after me. I squealed and yeah. So I play with the kids after school on the weekends. You know, Saturdays is a Mod Podge day. Orion is just annoyed with Maggie. So like, I'll be like, go play with your brother. I didn't make your brother for you guys not to play together. Like I'm not playing with you 24 seven. That's, this is not how this is going to work. But if you don't play with her, then that's when she gets into most of her trouble. So I try to keep a close eye on her, but you can't Hawkeye them all the time. And even with the security cameras and stuff, you know, I can't keep an eye on them 24 seven. So she's like, what am I supposed to do now? My room is boring. I'm like, well, we're going to leave you here with your thoughts and prayers. And she's like, well, good, because I'm going to pray for my toys to come back. I'm like, you do that. Yeah, we were out of that room 10 minutes and she was asleep. I'm like, well, that that's first. She slept for about an hour, woke up. And she goes, I had a good nap. And I was like, did you? And she goes, yeah, until I woke up and my toys weren't there. And I'm like, well, that sucks for you, buddy. Stop drawing all my stuff and I'll give you back your toys. And I'm like, you have to understand, like, parenting is hard, okay? I'm like, you have to understand. You do something I want you to do and then I'll do something you want me to do. But it's not going to be I only do what you want to do. That is, that is not cool. That's not how this is going to work either. So where Orion gets it, and every once in a while he'll get in trouble, and usually he's getting in trouble with Maggie. He doesn't get in trouble by himself. Like every once in a while he will, like when he broke the towel rack in the bathroom because apparently I asked him to get a towel off the towel rack in the bathroom, and he yanked it really hard and ripped the thing out of the wall. Don't worry. It wasn't like he, like, you know, hulked it or anything. It's cheap plaster on the wall. We live in an apartment. So we just put a bunch of flex seal in the hole and stuck it back on there. It works perfectly fine now. Um, we ain't gonna tell them though, y'all. So if y'all if y'all know the complex, don't don't tell them. Anyways, so she then decided, you know, mommy, if I be good, can I have my toys back? And I was like, well, that's kind of the idea, honey. You have to behave because you're you're doing the most right now. She goes, okay, can we have tacos for dinner? Now, for those of you who don't know, Maggie doesn't eat meat. So Maggie's idea of a taco is lettuce in a tortilla shell. That's it. No cheese, no 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 fixins, just lettuce in a tortilla shell. That's all she wants. And she wants it warm. She doesn't want it hot. She doesn't want it cold. She wants it warm. Warm lettuce in a tortilla shell. So I was like, maybe we'll think about it. Now we had already planned on having tacos. So I was like, maybe we'll think about it. I make the tacos and she sits down and she starts eating and I'm like, okay, she's actually eating. And I put meat in her taco because I'm like, tacos is not a taco without the meat in it. Like I don't do the whole vegetarian taco. We're not vegetarians here. We eat meat. So I'm like sitting there and I'm looking at Mr. Coffee. I'm like, dude, she's eating it. She ate two whole tacos, which is two more than she would normally eat. She was about to get a third and she goes, no, my tummy hurts now. I ate too many tacos. She goes, even the meat was yummy, mommy. I was like, oh, she noticed that there was meat in it. I was like, that's good. And she's like, so am I being good now? Because kids, of course, have no concept of time at all. I said two weeks and every two minutes she was asking me, can she have her toys back? And I was like, no. She's like, but I ate the meat and the nasty taco. Can I have my toys back? I'm like, no, that's not how this works. She goes, that's okay. That taco hurt my back anyways. And I'm like, I'm sorry, say what? 
Y'all, what is the craziest thing your child has ever said to you? I think that has to be at the top five. These that the taco hurt my back. And I was like, how did the taco hurt your back? Well, when I was eating it, it was hurting my back. I'm like, did you swallow it down the wrong tube? No, mama. I know which tube to swallow my food down. And it, it was hurting my back. <sighs> okay, Maggie. All right. Mag Even Orion's looking at her. And he's like, uh, Maggie, what does that mean? And she goes, mom, Orion's trying to act like he's better than me because his birthday's coming up. And I'm like, all he did was ask you what that meant. He knows what I mean. Y'all, I, I don't know what to do with Maggie anymore. I'm just, I feel at a loss. I feel at a loss because Maggie's going to be the one that tests all the sanity I have left. I swear she is. Meanwhile, everybody else is just enjoying dinner and she's just like, I, I, I can't eat this. It hurts my back. Okay. All right. Um, well, good luck to you and whatever it is that you're doing. Because I have no clue at this point. So yeah. So she is on punishment. She is still on punishment. She is still fussing. She's still asking can she get her toys back. She'll do one good thing. Like she brushed her teeth last night. And she goes can I have my toys back tomorrow? And I'm like no. It hasn't been two weeks. It's barely been like one day. And she goes in to brush her teeth. And she's all mad. And she looks at her and she goes I'm going to get my toys out of that closet. And I'm like hmm. So now we have a challenge going to see how long it's going to take her to try to break into the closet. And I watched her like a hawk last night on the cameras uh, in her room just to make sure that she didn't try to get into it. She tried. She went underneath the bed into the dollhouse and then tried to reach her arm up to get the door handle. And then she realized... And because the door handle is long and then it has like the small little neck. So it comes out kind of like this. So the piece that is in the door is like right here. And then the, the handle goes around like this. She she thought she was going to just reach her hand up and, um, and open the door and squeeze into the closet. That didn't work. She got mad and got stuck and had to call me to come get her. And I'm like, what are you doing? I wanted to play with one of my babies before I go to bed. I'm like, it is bedtime, not playtime. Because that was the other problem we were having too, is that she would stay up and play. And then like, after she cleaned her room, her room would be destroyed. Like, it was one of those things where you clean up and close the door and then open it right back up and the room is turned upside down again. That's, that's what it's like cleaning Maggie's room. So I'm just like, yeah, no, you're not getting the toys. Go to bed. And then she wakes up this morning. She goes, still no toys, mama. I'm like, yep. She goes, I must have been real bad. She goes, but don't worry, mommy. I'm going to be good so I can get my toys back. And then I'll be bad again. Um, I feel like Maggie's like an evil genius of some sort. I feel like I'm raising a tiny little minion for a malicious army of some sort. I don't, I don't know. But yeah, so we are dealing with that. And trying to get Orion's birthday stuff done. And does anybody else buy... Like if you have other kids and a birthday comes up. Do you buy your other kid a toy so that they don't feel left out? Like I always feel bad on the kids' birthdays. Because even Orion said it one year. He goes, well, mommy, if it's Jesus' birthday, then why do we get gifts? And I didn't have an answer for him. And I was just like, you know what, dude? Just, just, just go play. Go play with your toys. Don't ask me hard questions. Uh, don't, don't ask questions to which mommy can't answer. And Mr. Coffee and I are both agnostic. We don't really identify with any particular religion. And the kids, we are letting them essentially, when they get old enough, they can pick what they, what religion they would like to partake in. Because I don't want to. I was forced into going to church when I was little. And I didn't like the fact that I was forced and I didn't have an option to do what I wanted to do. Because obviously your kid, your parents aren't going to let you do what you want to do. You're a kid. But I was forced into Baptist church when I was little. And I'm sorry. Nobody should be playing drums that hardcore at 7 in the morning. Okay. So I, as I got older, I decided, you know, I don't really want to identify with any religion. I believe in what I believe in. I don't usually talk religion on my channel. So if you got something bad to say about it, like, you know. Take it somewhere else, cause you know Miss Coffee, she'll 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 bless you up and down the comment section. So don't don't bring the. 
I mean, I don't care about like when people say that like, they're going to pray for me or if people ask for prayers. I still pray and stuff. I just don't identify with a religion. So when Orion asked me stuff like that, I'm like, dude, I don't, I don't know. Just enjoy your gifts. Anyways. So for his birthday, we got Maggie the bracelet like his. Now tomorrow on his actual birthday, she won't get anything. She'll want to play with all the things, but she won't get anything. And I always feel bad doing that because I always feel like I'm excluding a kid, which you are because it's not the other kid's birthday. The problem is Ryan's birthday is February 11th, okay? Maggie's birthday is September 12th. Maggie has to wait all the <laughs> way until September to get something. And then when she does, like, Orion doesn't care. He's just like, oh, yay, it's your birthday. Here you go. Happy birthday. And we let Maggie pick out something for him for his birthday. We let Minna pick out something for him for his birthday. I got him something and then Mr. Coffee got something. And that way he gets a couple of different things. And I might have went and got him a couple more things that Mr. Coffee doesn't realize or know. He won't know until tomorrow. Either way. Um, so yeah, so Mr. Coffee's going to make him... Mr. Coffee loves baking. He's, he's the baker. He's going to make him a Minecraft creeper cake, which is just green and black. This ought to be fun. So yeah, which... I'm not sure. I'm guessing he's going to make it tonight because he won't have time to make it tomorrow night. So I don't know. I got to figure that part out. But yeah. So since we're hitting up on the hour mark, I'm going to cut this off here. Um, I'll probably add another snippet at the end. If I do, you'll see it here. Welcome back, everyone. So today is Orion's birthday. Today is February 11th. He turns nine. Uh, we are in preparation for a little party here at the house for little dude. Uh, so I had to go run out this morning. I had to do errands, which I hate doing errands in the morning because I feel like I lose a good portion of my day, even though it only usually takes me about an hour. But running those errands, it makes me feel like I just wasted an entire day. Like I left the house here at eight. I got back at nine and I sat around just so I could sit for a few minutes and do nothing before I had to start recording and editing and all that fun stuff. So, yeah. Um, i got to find this Y. There's a Y right here that I missed apparently yesterday. I didn't work on this last night because we were prepping for Orion's little party today. Uh, for those who are new to the channel, Orion is my son. I only have one son. He is nine today. Uh, Orion was also my preemie. So I had one child. My first child was two weeks late. Orion was delivered three and a half weeks early. So about a month early. And then Maggie was delivered like literally right on her due date. But Orion was my preemie. So at eight, at, at three and a half weeks early, he was uh, eight and a half pounds. Uh... He was the biggest preemie in the NICU. They called him the shark baby because he was so big. And he spent his first week of life in the NICU because he swallowed fluid when I was pregnant or when I delivered him. And so that began his lung issues. That On top of that, uh, when Orion was three months old, a friend of mine's brought her daughter over and didn't tell me because she wanted to come over and see the baby. She didn't tell me her daughter had RSV and her daughter only, the funny thing is I remember it very vividly. Her daughter coughed once and Orion was in the hospital that night with RSV. He stayed in the hospital for, and this was when he was like three months old. He stayed in the hospital for another week and a half and he's had lung issues ever since. Uh, so that's why he, like I keep close eye and tabs on him because he does have the issues with his lungs it's gotten a lot better over the years. He's not as sickly as he was before. Before, you could say, you know, the word get sick and Orion would get sick. Now, you know, we've been here in North Dakota for almost two years. And it seems like, if not all, most of his issues have gone away. Uh, his allergies are nowhere near as bad as they were when we lived in Pennsylvania. So, uh, he's doing really good. Uh... And it's funny because last night I let him open one of his birthday presents early, which is his per his present from his Nana and Papa. They sent him a memory card. Now, for Christmas, Orion got a Nintendo Switch. Now, this thing was hella expensive. And when we got it, I was like, okay, he's going to be super excited because he's wanted one of these. 
and he asked for it for Christmas, and we actually were able to get it. So we got him the Nintendo Switch. The problem was we didn't realize that the Nintendo Switch needed an SD card. So we got him the Nintendo Switch. We go to download a couple of games, and it tells us that, you know, we've reached our limit of space on this game system, so we were going to have to get him an SD card. And I was like, oh, crap. Well, he didn't think he... Which I didn't realize this till last night. He didn't think he could play the DS or the Switch. And so he hasn't been playing it. And I didn't know why he wasn't playing it. I thought maybe he, you know, just didn't want to play it or he changed his mind or what have you. Here, when he opened his gift from his grandparents last night, he goes, oh, I have a memory card. And I was like, yeah. He goes, for my Switch. And I was like, yeah, bud, you can go play your Switch now. And, has, you know, we can download more games. And he goes, well, now I can actually play it. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? Y'all, he... It's it's February. He hasn't played the Switch since December because he thought he needed the SD card to play the game. <sighs> Children. So I explained to him last night that he could have been playing the game the entire time. And mommy and daddy were kind of upset because we didn't think he liked it. And he goes, well, yeah, but I thought I needed the memory card. I'm like, no, you just need the memory card for more games. To which his next question was... Yep, you guessed it. So does that mean I get more games? Sure. So he got a new game. Cheers. He got a new game for his Switch. So he's a happy little boy. Uh, the rest of his gifts, if they aren't on their way now, they'll be here to, later on today. So I had to go out and get him cake and ice cream. Or I had to go out and get him or deliver his cupcakes to school and then go get ice cream because I forgot to tell Mr. Coffee to get ice cream yesterday. So we had to get him ice cream and uh, deliver his cupcakes, which I am always weary about like delivering stuff to the school, not because I don't want to or anything, but because as you guys know, or if you're new, um, in the mornings I take the kids to school and I also take... The dogs with me so that I can just take the dogs right over to the dog park and I don't have to worry about coming back to the house and then walking them over when I'm already you know over by the dog park dropping the kids off so I just take the dogs with me which if you're a patreon uh you you know where the dog park is it's like literally a few minutes down the street here um the patreons would know because uh I do ride-alongs with them like they get videos of me driving around and showing where I live, and some of the, well, mostly going to Walmart and the post office and, you know, whatever errands I have to run that day. Uh, so, yeah, so, I am weary about taking the, the stuff to the school this morning because I had the dogs in the car, and I don't want to leave. My luck would be I would go to get out of the car with the kids, get the kids in the school, drop the cupcakes off at the office because when you, when you bring in snacks, you drop them off at the office because you don't want your child running around with cupcakes. And so I'm always weary that I'm going to come outside and see Killian driving it off in my car, mainly because he when they, whenever the kids get out of the car, he jumps into the back seat because they sit where the trunk is, and then when the kids get out of the car, Ryan or Killian goes and sits in Maggie's car seat. I don't know why he sits there. That's just what he does. Uh, I guess he thinks it's the best seat in the car. He just he he will literally just sit in the car seat, and then look out the window. So, which uh, he could always sit on Orion's side and look out the window, but he prefers to sit in the car seat. Whatever. So. I'm always weary because I'm always scared that Killian's going to drive off or he's going to hit the, the, the gear shift because I have one of the ones where the gear shift, my car has a gear shift in the, on the center console instead of on the steering wheel. So I'm always scared that I'm going to like leave them in the car for 30 seconds and come out and Killian will be sitting in my seat, like driving off because it just seems like something Killian would do because he's Killian. So this morning we were running a little bit late and I had to leave the dogs in the car. Surprisingly, they did well, even for the fact that somebody didn't close the car door all the way. And I was expecting to come out and see them running around out with the kids because they've done that before where I've come out of the school dropping something off 
and they've been running around like not so much chasing the kids but trying to play with the kids and the kids that are coming out of their parents cars are like trying to play with them and I'm having to like wrangle up my dogs because they're just running around playing with these kids so my dogs love kids especially Daisy and it's the funny thing is most adults are scared of my my German Shepherd but kids absolutely love the German Shepherd they like they like Killian too but usually if a kid comes over the first dog they go after is the German Shepherd which, of course, Daisy doesn't mind. She loves kids, so. Um, but, yeah, I was able to... I've got to put more wax in that pin. I was able to go drop the cupcakes off, come back, take the dogs to the dog park, come back to the house, drop the dogs off, go run an errand. I had to go grab a couple of things from Walmart. I have to go check my P.O. box because I was alerted. Which, if you, if you guys send something to the P.O. box, please let me know. Um, because if you don't tell me, I usually don't check it. Because I'm not expecting anything to be in there. So if you do send something, uh, just maybe shoot me a message. Be like, hey, Miss Coffee, I sent you something to your P.O. box. You're going to want to check it here in about a week or so. Just so I know. Because I literally, I have no clue when her package got here. But whenever I went to the P.O. box, sure enough, there was a package in there. I was like, oh, snap. I should probably check this more often. Um, Mr. Coffee usually checks it. But last night was a busy night because he had to leave work he already had to leave work yesterday morning anyways because of the the battery to my car not wanting to work properly but he had to leave work to help me with that for two hours then go back to work work all day come out of work or leave work go to walmart and grab a couple of things that he had to grab come home walk dogs make cake and then he had to go to bed so he had a busy day already, so I was like, don't worry about the stuff you forgot. I'll just go grab it in the morning. So I had to go grab that stuff this morning. But it always seems like whenever I leave the house in the mornings, I feel like I've been gone for, like, hours. And I'll be gone for, like, 45 minutes. And I'm like, I feel like I've been gone forever. But I got all the stuff I need for tonight. So we're going to have a little party with him and a couple of his little friends from school that live close by. And hopefully the night will go smoothly because mama is tired. I don't know. Does anybody else get headaches from the change in the, the weather? Because, like, I am noticing the influx of headaches that I've been getting. And I'm like, what the world? I am getting enough sleep. I am getting my eight hours. But for some reason, for some god-awful reason, I wake up and my eye just starts, like, the pressure behind my eye is just intense. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? Like, I've never had this many headaches before. Yesterday, our temperature, our high for the day was uh, 27. Today, it's supposed to be 37. And I'm like, maybe it's the change in temperature. Because then they're also like, it's supposed to rain. Why Why would you rain on the one good day we get in, in like the last month or so like seriously actually I can't even say that because we did have a whole week worth of really nice uh 40 degree temperatures where it wasn't frigidly cold but the 40 degree temperature doesn't matter when you got 25 mile an hour winds and it makes it feel like it's 20 something degrees outside like I feel like mother nature is still confused like it's one of those things where you have to ask people instead of asking people like what the temperature is going to be like this week. You're like, what seasons are we going to experience this week? Like, what seasons? Are we getting all the seasons this week? Because I don't know about a lot of y'all, but I we get all the seasons in a day. So you got your winter in the morning because it's flipping freezing outside. And then you get spring by early afternoon. You get a little, a little taste of summer uh, mid-afternoon. And then late afternoon into the evening, you get your fall temperatures and then late in the night, you get your winter temperatures again. And I'm like, I don't know how to dress for this. Like today, it was 11 degrees when I dropped the kids off. It is currently 30 degrees outside. So in like a two hour time span, it's warmed up like a lot. And I'm like, I don't know if I can handle this. My brain definitely can't because my brain is on fire right now. And I'm just like, oh my God, like stop. Just, just. Leave the, like, I feel like there there's uh somebody up making, like, Mother Nature is messing with the thermostat up there, and she's just, like, getting, like, she's talking to her dad or something, and he's like, don't touch my thermostat, and they're just flicking it back and forth, because it is ridiculous, the weather we've been having. And I know I live in North Dakota, which is prone to be cold, 
it's not even so much bothering me that it's cold. Now it's just bothering me that the temperature can't stay consistent. Either be cold or be hot. Be one or the other. Don't be jumping back and forth. Um, also, I got the best gift ever from my dad, minus the waffle maker and everything else he sends. Um, I got a heated vest. Now, the vest, you put in one of a portable battery charger. You put it in the inside pocket of the vest, and it heats the vest up. You guys, why me and the dog stay outside yesterday for a good hour and a half? I didn't care how cold it was. I was warm, okay? it. I didn't even know such a thing existed, okay? And I was just like, I need a bigger battery charger. So I'm going to look for a bigger battery charger because I I freaking love this little... And it's, it's sad because it's a vest. And I'm like, I wish it was a jacket. But it's a vest and I can handle that. So it is what it is. Either way. So we have Orion's birthday festivities today. So I probably will be unavailable until later this evening. Which later this evening, I'll probably be over in uh, Becky's Madness for Crafting's live. Because it is game night. If you don't know what game night is, she plays a game on her channel, I think, once a month. Where we play Jackbox games. You guys, I'm, to I'm totally obsessed with these games. So, I, I need to go play this game. And I'm mad that she only does it once a month. But, you know, I'll take what I can get, I guess. Trying not to be greedy, but being greedy at the same time. Yeah, that's a thing. So, yeah. So, since I've, a whole day has passed, um, I... I'm thinking of introducing uh, Stitchy Time to the channel. Now, if you guys don't watch Becky's Madness for Crafting, she was talking about how she doesn't want to do floss tube because of all the stuff that happened with this uh, blind stitcher person, which I only know what happened because of Stitcherista. I, I was watching her, and she was talking about how the floss tube community, some of the people there were being really ignorant, and I was just like, this is why I don't want... Okay, so I, I don't like talking about this because it's when I first started YouTube. Now, before I started this channel, I actually had another channel. Like a lot of YouTubers, I had another channel. It was a floss tube channel. I don't tell people just because it, it literally only lasted about two weeks. And I did floss tube for two weeks. And in that two weeks, I had gotten into arguments with three people... And a bunch of people telling me that I don't cross-stitch correctly. That's not how you cross-stitch. That's not the type of stuff that they would consider, you know, a skill in cross-stitch or what have you. And I got so discouraged, I quit. I quit doing YouTube for six months. And then I found diamond painting and crochet, or I was already crocheting. And Mr. Coffee talked me into restarting up another channel, which is the channel you guys are currently watching this video on. And so when when everybody started cross-stitching, I got the cross-stitch bug as well. But I've just been sort of kind of showing you guys here and there what I've been doing. And I was like, I vowed that I would never do floss tube again. I'm like, no, I can't. I will not deal with these these really rude people. Uh, and it's not everybody in the floss tube community. You you have a lot of people in this floss tube community that are very accepting and you know, loving and encouraging, like, uh, I, my favorite floss tuber, hands down, stitching, stitching with sequins, love her, love her attitude, she runs a, I think she runs a cross-stitch shop or something called 1884, I love her, oh my god, and just, just the way she goes about it, and I was so discouraged when I did my channel, but I never stopped watching hers, and I have her on, like, my Instagram, and I, I just, I love her. She just is really sassy and classy and just all-around badassy. Like, I just, I just love her. And so I decided, you know, I don't want to do floss tube. I don't, I don't want to do floss tube. Like most places, I, I, I don't feel accepted there. So when Becky's Madness for Crafting was talking about it, and she talked to me about it after she made her, her video, uh, I was like, oh, well... She still, she's like, I still want to cross stitch. I just don't want to be in, in I don't want to do floss too. So she came up with stitchy time. And I was like, I like stitchy time. So I think I might do like short snippets of stitchy time. I just have to f like figure out what day to do that. It might be Wednesdays because the sassy craft along isn't going to last forever. It's only like a month long, which 
If you would like to enter your project into the Sassy Craft Along, all you have to do is head over to my group, Crafters Anonymous with Miss Crochet and Coffee and Rachel Ray. Yes, I share a group with one of my other favorite YouTubers, Rachel Ray. And over there, we are supported by Diamond Art Club, which obviously you guys already know who Diamond Art Club is. If you don't, they're one of the most highly uh, sought after companies on the market in DP community, in my opinion, uh, but just because of the quality of their canvases and stuff. Uh, but uh, if you head over to the group and you're not a part of the group, all you have to do is answer the questions and agree to the rules. I added an extra question just so the people knew that you had to answer questions and agree to the rules. Um, so all you have to do is answer the three questions, agree to the rules, and boom, it'll automatically let you in. And you get all kinds of insider tips and coupons and fun stuff. So please feel free to join us over there. Um, but to enter into the Sassy Craft Along, every Monday I post an announcement asking for projects. Now I do have to ask, because apparently this is becoming a thing every freaking week. I do have to ask that we do not put religious pictures into the Sassy Craft Along. Because I can't on good faith put religion into something that one is considered supposed to be for crap sassy projects now not all the projects in there most of them aren't even sassy projects most of them aren't they're just projects they're just craft projects i don't mind that but i can't in good faith put a religious picture in with some of the projects that are submitted and I don't, and the backlash isn't going to come to the folks who did the project the backlash is going to come to me for putting such a uh, religion into that and all like the whole religion thing i don't like going into it so uh, uh we're just not going to go there so if you like to enter in a project that is not religious please feel free to put your picture in the thread now i do not use names in the sassy craft along for uh for privacy purposes but if you like anything you see in the crafty sass along and you want to ask the person who did it the post stays up all day in the announcement section until Wednesday evening when it's taken down out of the announcements. So please feel free to peruse through the projects that are in there. I have a blue in here for some reason. So yeah, so that won't last forever. So I'm probably going to start it up here soon because the Sassy Craft Along is over at the end of March. Because I know a lot of people were asking me about that. The Sassy Craft Along goes until the end of March. You can also hashtag your work, hashtag Sassy Craft Along on Instagram. And I'll see it there. If you would like to enter it in and you don't have Facebook, that's perfectly fine too. Just email it to me. My email is always in the description box of my videos. I had to go back and uh, fix my description box though because I noticed that apparently I had the wrong link in for my color street which I haven't had color street on in a while my nails are recovering from the injury I got uh what was it like two weeks ago where I broke a nail off halfway down into like the skin like into the white meat of my nail um so I took a break from color street because I don't want to put a color street on all my nails except for one that nail is still growing back so I, I've put a hold on it, but I do have some Valentine's Day sets and one St. Patrick's Day set coming, so I'm pretty excited. Um, so there's that. Uh, yesterday went smoothly, surprisingly, minus the fact that Maggie came home and she, she had that, that moment of for, I forgot, where she forgot that she didn't have any toys in her room to play with, and then it was, Mommy, let's play. I'm like, what are we playing? She goes, I don't know. You took all my toys, so now I guess you have to play with me, and I'm like, well, I would have played with you anyways, but whatever. So I was like, well, what do you want to play? And she's like, I don't know. It's hard to play without toys. Can't have a tea party when you have no one there. To like, she was guilt tripping me real hardcore about not having any toys. And I'm like, how can you, of seven years old, already know how to play the guilt trip game? Like, seriously? Like, I'm like, you riding that pity party train real hard right now, aren't you? She's like, well, I would, but all my toys are in the closet and I can't get to them. And I'm like, you know what? And they're going to stay in the closet. They're going to stay in the closet until you learn to stop writing on things. And I guess at school, her teacher sent home a note. Not because she was bad, because she was actually good. Uh, Miss North Dakota visited the school yesterday for the kids. And she was answering questions and stuff for the kids. But I guess they were having problems with children not listening and wanting to talk the entire time. And so... 
the kids got rewarded if they didn't get in trouble for not talking. And then they, of course, lost a reward if they were caught talking while Miss, Miss North Dakota was talking. So Maggie was one of maybe five kids in her class that wasn't caught, caught talking. And I was like, well, first she'd have to talk. Maggie's really shy at school. So I was like, first she would have to talk at school to get in trouble for talking. And since her one and only little friend, which she has more friends, but she refuses to like play with them like she plays with her one friend, Gabby. Uh, just because Gabby seems to understand her a lot easier than the other kids do. And so her and Gabby are like best friends. And she has another little friend named Blake. But sometimes she, she comes home and she's like, sometimes Blake doesn't understand me. Ugh, men. And I was like, uh, what? You, you can't say ugh, men. Like, you're, you're seven. And she's like, mommy, the struggle is real. I'm like, you listen to me talk way too much. Way, way, way too much. Again, uh, same question from last week. When does, when, when did they stop copying you? When? When is this going to be a thing? Um... So yeah, so if I'm unavailable this evening or if you have questions or whatever and you answer, you know, you're looking for me, I will probably either be A, celebrating my son's birthday or B, in Becky's Madness for Crafting's Live because that's after the kids go to bed. So yay, it's going to be a busy day today and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with a busy day every now and then. Um, also, if you've gotten this far in the video, tell me how you like the longer whipping chats. Do you prefer just an hour or do you like the hour and a half whipping chats? I've been trying to make it at least a little bit clo as close to an hour and a half as possible. Sometimes, obviously, it's not possible. But I try to make it close to an hour and a half as possible. So if you've made it this far, let me know. Do you like the longer whipping chats? Do you prefer the hour whipping chats? Believe me, you're not going to hurt my feelings if you just prefer the hour. Um, because stitchy time, I will probably, whenever I don't have haul for stitchy time, I will probably be doing a stitch with me where I talk a little bit about stitching and stuff. The first video I want to do is, uh, how I cross stitch. Cause I, I, I don't, I don't think I cross stitch any different than most people, but you know, you never know how other people, I just flung a diamond at myself. You never know how other people cross stitch and I cross stitch a particular way where my tails are all hidden and I don't have to like cut off tails and all whatnot. And so if you are interested in that, let me know because that will be coming to the channel here soon. Um, I also was thinking about doing another tutorial on adult coloring for how do I color my uh, color and fill pages? Uh, like how do I tackle skin tones? Which is hard. It's, it's not hard because, especially if you have skin tone markers. But uh, I just have all these ideas just to keep the unboxings down because I don't want to be just doing unboxings and whipping chats. And I feel like that's all that's happening right now on my channel is unboxings and whipping chats. So I would like to give you guys a little bit more of a variety. I need to finish Pikachu. I got halfway done with it and then put it away because I had this come and I was like I want to do this and this will be finished by Valentine's Day I'm going to work on this tonight I was uh last night I was helping with the cake and everything and then I decided my threads came in for my heart that I'm making so I started working on that a little bit didn't get too far but it was nice to work on something else um that and I need to hurry up and get this done because I want to start that firefighter one so bad. I miss squares. I miss squares so much. I am a square person. I know a lot of people are intimidated by squares and are like, oh my God, squares. But I love squares and I miss them so much. Like I feel like we're in a long distance relationship and that long distance is from my couch to my bedroom because God knows how many square canvases are in that room. But I'm just like, I, I need to do a square. I need to. Like I... I love rounds. They're nice and cool. Like, I have nothing against rounds. But, oh my god, I need a square in my life so bad. So, yeah. So, I can't wait to start the firefighter canvas because I need a square in my life bad. So, okay. I've been talking and using a phrase called kitty crack. Does anybody know what kitty crack is? Can anybody tell me what kitty crack is? If you don't know what kitty crack is, if you have children... You might not call it kitty crack, but I call it kitty crack. Kitty crack is anything that you give your child that makes them hyper. Now, with that said, I don't know how far into this I went yesterday. I don't remember. I tried looking for it on the video I made yesterday, but I didn't have time to watch the whole thing back. 
All right, so kitty crack. So last week I was sent a care package from Laura's Laura Law's Craft Corner, which congratulations to uh, Becky's Madness for crafting and Laura Law's Craft Corner for both hitting 500 after they they did the one hour whip and chat challenge. And then we noticed like right after on Saturday, they both hit 500. So that's awesome. Congrats, ladies. Uh, much, much success to you. And hopefully that you guys hit a thousand here soon. But I'm sitting there and on Saturdays, I talk to a group of friends. I talk to uh, Jen Jen's Creation Wall, JJ Space, Laura Lost Craft Corner, and Becky's Madness for Crafting. And we just sit and talk and, you know, whatever. It's my adult time. So if you ever try to get a hold of me on a Saturday, that's probably where I'm at. So that's probably why I'm not answering you. Um, so Laura sent me a package. Now, I have been bugging Laura to make me black and white cookies. Now, if you don't know what black and white cookies are, if you've ever seen Seinfeld, there was a whole episode on black and white cookies. Um, it's kind of like more like a cake instead of a cookie, but they call it black and white cookies because one side of it's black and the other side of it's white. Well, it's not really black. It's like dark brown because it's chocolate. Now, for those of you who don't know, I'm allergic to chocolate, especially dark chocolate, but I wanted to taste black and white cookies. Now, I took Mr. Car Mr. Coffee's New Yorker card away because he had no clue what the hell a black and white cookie was. And then he tasted one. So, yes, Laura, he did get to taste one. He tasted one and was like, oh, my God, this is so good. I'm like, yeah, you lived in New York how long? And uh, you were raised in New York and you didn't know what a black and white cookie was. So I have been bugging Laura to make me one because for those who don't know, Laura is from New York. If you can't tell by just listening to her, she's from New York. Um, she has that big, thick Italian New Yorker accent too. It's hilarious. So I had been bugging her to make me these cookies. Now she made me the cookies. I ate two cookies and immediately my throat started feeling funny. Now my allergy doesn't really, I don't break out into hives too often. It just depends on what it is. Usually with chocolate, I break out into hives and it's usually on my face. Well, this time my throat started getting itchy, scratchy, and I was like, no, it's time to stop. And I and I will stop if I feel like something's up. And I keep Benadryl on hand and I have EpiPen and all the fun stuff. So I'm sitting here and I ate a cookie and I, I, got, I started feeling sick and I was like, okay, that's enough of the cookies for today. Why won't this come out here? There's a diamond stuck in there, and I can't get it out. Only thing I hate about the heart, the Craftmate lockables. So for those wondering what these containers are, that are Craftmate lockables. You can get them at Michael's or on Amazon. So yeah. Anyways. So I bugged Laura, bugged Laura, bugged Laura. She finally made me the cookies, finally sent them out to me. I, I get sick off the first two cookies. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to share with everybody, because I know if I don't share, she'll fuss at me like I did with the peanut butter cookies that she sent before. So I shared with the kids. Now this is where the kitty crack comes in. Now, I don't know what the white part of the cookie is. So if you know, write that down in the comment section. But the black part she showed me was a special dark chocolate, which I didn't realize it was dark chocolate. Because if, if I would have realized that, I would have told her, hey, please don't use dark chocolate because I can't have dark chocolate. Well, I didn't know. So she made them. And... I'm sitting here wondering why my throat's so scratchy. So I pull out my Benadryl, take my Benadryl, and I go, okay, I can't have any more. I give uh, each kid get a, got a cookie. And they're decent-sized cookies, okay? I give my kids a cookie. An hour later, just, just go an hour later, all of a sudden, the kids are running around like they're rampant zoo animals. I'm talking about they're running between the rooms. They're running in the hallway of the building. They're, like, running... At one point, I'm sitting here on the couch, and I look up, and my son leaps from the floor to my dining room table, onto my counter, off the counter, with Maggie trailing behind him doing the exact same thing, jump off the counter, run to my room, jump on my bed, hit their... Orion hit his head on one of the strings to uh, my ceiling fan, freaked out started screaming and yelling, ran to his room with Maggie right behind him, and they're just jumping and running and jumping and running. And I go, oh my God, will you guys stop? What's wrong with you? Like, what are you, 
what did you eat? A bag of sugar? Like, stop. They just wouldn't stop. And they hadn't, they, they just kept going all night, just running and jumping and run. Mr. Coffee comes home. Maggie runs, jumps up, jumps into his arms. Daddy, 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 daddy. And then she starts talking to him. And he's like, what the hell? He looks at me. He goes, what did you give them? I'm like, I literally gave them one cookie, one freaking cookie. Again, cookies are a decent size. He's like, let's not do that again. I'm like, yeah, I think we can agree on that. We're not going to give them cookies again. It was so bad, you guys. That night, I'm not even joking. I'm looking at the cameras in the kids' rooms, which I will have the review up for the cameras. I'm going to try to do that next week um, because I finally did get a hold of the people that sent it, sent the cameras to me, and they told me to go ahead and do the video uh, comparing the two cameras. So I, so for those wanting to know a little bit more about these cameras that I have, I'll be doing a video. It probably won't be a good one, but I'll do one anyways on the security camera video uh, that I got sent by the company. They're great cameras. But uh, we're sitting there and I'm looking at the cameras because I check them every periodically while the, after the kids have gone to bed. I'll check the cameras just to make sure that they're in bed and they're not playing or in their room or whatever. I look in Orion's room. It looks like he's running in his sleep, okay? And I'm like, Jordan, look at your son. And he's like, what? And i like, look at your son. He looks over at me and he looks at the phone and he sees his Orion's legs are literally moving under his blankets, but he's asleep. But his legs are still moving. Like he has like restless leg syndrome. And I was like, uh, he's like, uh, why? I'm like, I think it's still the sugar. I turn on the security camera in Maggie's room. She literally fell out of bed. And I was like, um, which doesn't happen. It happens every once in a while, but not often. And I'm just sitting there like, yeah, that's the last time I give them any cookies. And the sad part is they got the cookies at like four o'clock in the afternoon. So like the fact that they were still hyper off sugar when they went to bed at eight o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say we're not going to give them any more cookies. I think they've had enough cookies. Uh, for one lifetime, I think we're I think we're good on the cookie aspect. So next time Laura decides to send me cookies, I'll just I I just won't share them. Not no no, at least not those cookies. And it is it is drug dealer uh time once again, folks. If you don't know what I'm talking about, here in the U.S. we have what is called Girl Scouts. Girl Scouts sell Girl Scout cookies. Girl Scout cookies are the most delicious thing on the planet. Now, not everybody likes Girl Scout cookies. I am aware of this, but I am obsessed with Girl Scout cookies. What, if you like Girl Scout cookies, what are your favorite cookie from the Girl Scouts? My favorites have to be the shortbreads or the Thin Mints or the Samoas. The Samoas are the ones with like the coconut on top. And I think Jeremy said he was allergic to coconut. I was like, you poor guy, you could never have Samoas. But I freaking love Girl Scout cookies. And every time they come in, I I like I can just I, I start fiending for cookies and I'm just like, "Oh my god, I need cookies. I need cookies. Oh my god, where are the Girl Scouts at? I need the cookies. I need all the cookies." Let me buy Last year I bought $300 worth of Girl Scout cookies, y'all. These these Girl Scout cookies are like 4 or 5 bucks a box. It was bad. But in my defense, I did send some out. It wasn't like I just sat there and ate a whole $300 worth of cookies. I sent some out to some friends. I think Rachel Ray got like a box or two or something. Like I sent, I did send out Girl Scout cookies, but I bought a crap ton of Girl Scout cookies. When we lived at our old place, we would literally chase down the van because there was a van that would come through our neighborhood of a little girl that sold Girl Scout cookies. And when she came by, I wasn't home. We had went to the store and they didn't, they, we never knew when they were coming. They would just come in this van and the back of the van would be open. And that's why I called the little girl a drug dealer. And she was like, well, that's not very nice. I'm like, yeah, it's not very nice to take all my money for cookies either. But, you know, support the troops. So, uh, which, you know, no offense to whatever, but that's just what I call them. But I'm sitting here and I'm like, and I, I said something to Mr. Coffee about it the other day. And he goes, oh, yeah, I seen a Girl Scout out at, you know, what is that? He saw a Girl Scout out at Walmart on Saturday. And I was like, oh, they're here. It is time. And he's like, oh, no, not again. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're doing this. He goes, please don't buy a crap ton of Girl Scout cookies this year. I'm like, look, listen, listen, listen. I'm going to buy 
a reasonable amount of Girl Scout cookies this year. I promise it won't be as bad as last year. Y'all, it's going to be worse than last year. I can tell you right now. I've already gained the Frosty 40. If you don't know what the Frosty 40 is, um, the Frosty 40 is when you sit in your house all winter and you refuse to go outside because it's too flipping cold and you just sit and eat snacks all day. That's the Frosty 40. Kind of like the College 20. So, yeah. Um, I've, I've, I'm pretty sure I've gained the Frosty 40. And that's one of the reasons why I've been making it a point to walk the dogs whenever it's time to have, have their afternoon walk instead of drive them over. Because I, I know I've gained a few pounds since winter started. I, I got to stay warm. How else am I supposed to stay warm? Blankets and exercise? That's gross. So yeah, so Girl Scouts are have come. I'm excited. Mr. Coffee's just like shaking his head at me. My dad even mentioned something about it because my dad is just as bad as I am when it comes to Girl Scout cookies. And I'm just like, hey, I got to support the troops. One box of cookies at a time. But I think I'm going to end it there and shoot you back to the other video. So we'll talk to you in the next clip. All right, I'm going to add this little snippet in because I almost forgot you guys. It's been a week since we started our little project, our little experiment here with our butterfly. So how did the butterfly weather after a week? From the looks of it, we have one wrinkle right there. But let's see if that's in the plastic or if that is in the canvas. And okay, so let me explain. So I put this canvas on my shelf and it fell. It fell down on the heater. It had to have probably been on the heater maybe a couple hours. Um, I have baseboard heaters and they're not always on. So I'm going to guess the heater wasn't on because when I picked it up, it wasn't hot or warm. So um it did fall on the heater, but I don't think it affected it too much. So we're going to pull the plastic back here. And remember, we had that damage there and then this river down here or bubble down at the bottom. And you can see the date on it. And it looks like we have like a crease and it's not bubbled. That's just a crease. So we still have the two bubbles up top here, which were marked from last time. And it looks like we have a crease, which is right where it fell. And it was kind of like flopped over. And that crease goes all the way down to that little one at the bottom that we marked from last time. But the rest of the canvas. Again, there's that bubble from last time. But the rest of the canvas looks to be faring very well, which that is manageable. That is just a crease like that. That's not even really a bubble. It's just a crease in the glue, which sometimes can be unavoidable. This still is holding up a lot better than I expected it to. So I would definitely say if you have extra plastic for your diamond paintings, try covering them and look at that that's perfect try covering them with plastic instead of the opaque covers or if you're not a fan of the plastic try parchment sheets um i did order some parchment sheets i'm probably going to do another video on it next week i'm going to put a parchment a sheet on one of my double-sided adhesive canvases and let it sit for a week and then i'll show you both of those at the end of those whipping chats but I wanted to come back and show you this. It did suffer a little bit of damage from the fall on the heater. But besides this line, there's no other damage. There's nothing to document this week. This part is fine. This part is fine. It's just where those two bubbles were. And of course, they're going to try to raise up to create a bigger bubble because there was already a bubble right there. So surprisingly, this one didn't do anything. But again, this is where it essentially when it fell and it went down it went down like this so when I picked it up it was like this so that is to be expected because of the fall so that I can't put on the plastic because the rest of the canvas is unaffected it's just the area where it was folded so if I had to say 
whether I think this is working or not, I definitely would say yes, I believe it's working. So if you are interested in this experiment, go ahead and try it for yourself. Again, I'm going to do a whole separate video on this next week showing you guys what happens after week two. So week one, minus the damages suffered from my fault, that, that's not at the fault of the canvas, that's at my fault there. It did have the two or the three bubbles here, here, and there that we flattened before we uh, put the plastic on it. But other than that, I say the, the experiment is working. So I'm going to shoot you back to the other video now. But with that said, folks, that is it for me today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to the channel and would like to see more random crazy videos just like this one, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified anytime I randomly decide to put up a video. And believe me, it's random. With that said, folks, I'm now going to have to bid you adieu. But not before reminding you, like I always try to. Be kind. Be courteous. Be cool. Bye, guys.